this is David for Baked Bits, and in this video we're going to continue on to our next step of the scripting tutorial for the TradingView Pine scripts and creating our own indicators. And we're going to do a little bit more here, and we're going to improve upon our last video, and we're going to add the ability to select the source of the data used to calculate our moving averages, and we're also going to add another type of moving average to our indicator. So in the last video we had four different moving averages and now we're going to have five. We're going to add in the whole moving average which I personally really like and then we're also of course going to be changing the source. So let's go ahead and take a look at our end product here and once we discuss what we have at the uh, with the end result of our code then we can take a look at how we got there. So in this video you're going to see uh, a lot of the changes come, of course, from these inputs that we're having to create. Uh, in the last video, I showed you how we could do different moving average types, but in this video, we've added yet another moving average. I wanted to show you how uh, the if statement works when there's multiple lines of logic. Uh, in the last video, there's really only one line. And also, we've added the source. So when you're calculating these moving averages, you have to tell it what numbers to use from the candle information in order to calculate the moving average. Now by default, we were using the close price, which is the final price of the candle. And in going forward, maybe you want to use something different. Maybe you want to calculate based on the open, the high, the low, or these other options. Uh, adding the source option gives you the flexibility to change based on what you really need and uh, a lot of times it might not make a lot of sense to do it with moving averages to use the high or the low but it might make sense in other indicators you know but for us using the close is just fine I'm gonna leave it there for now uh, well once we get done let's show you what it's gonna look like first of all before I move on. So we have a 50 period SMA using the close as the source on this green line here for MA1. Let's change it to where it's only going to use the highs. You can see there's a bunch of wicks to the top on these candles and that should make a pretty good adjustment here compared to what we're seeing. Let's change our source to the high. Yeah, you can see the line is reasonably higher than it was before and I think it has a lot to do with these wicks. Uh, if it wasn't for uh, us selecting high and using close, you can see it used these values up here as opposed to the close values which were down here. So you can see the uh, moving average is a little bit higher. Now most people don't use that so it's probably not going to be too useful for you to use to compare prices and such, but it's now an option for you. It's in your arsenal and you're going to see how to do that. So like we've done before, as you can tell from the inputs, the inputs are just storing those selections that you're making into a variable. And we're going to have to use that variable later when we do our calculations. Now, the uh, source is a specific type of input, as you can see. I've highlighted that here. That is what tells the, um, the, the modal pop-up here that you can select these types. Now this is a built-in list, kind of like how we had our options list that we created uh, in the last video so you can select different types of moving averages. This is actually a built-in list or if you're familiar with development you might consider it an enumerator, uh, a enumerated list or you know a predefined array, whatever you want to call it. We've got these available built-in for us. Now, I've shown you you can change them, but we've set the default value to close because that's probably going to be the one that's used the most. I think that's pretty fair to say. Now, now that we've done that, you can see just how it worked on the inputs. You select it and it saves it to the variable that we've defined. Now, we've done this for all of the moving averages so that each one can be defined by its own. So not only can you select a different moving average for each of the three lines, you'll also be able to select a different source. So if you wanted, as I've shown you before, to just use the high on the 50 period SMA, you can do that. 
if you wanted to use the low on the 200 period SMA, you could do that. You can have any kind of combination you want, and that's part of the development that we're doing is we're trying to make this code as flexible as possible so that you can do as many things that you want without having to recode the indicator entirely. And that's a very valuable thing to learn when it comes to creating your own indicators is making them flexible so that you don't have to go back and change a lot of things. All you have to do is change a setting and you've changed the entire indicator uh, for the most part. There's a lot of good things you can learn just by making your code flexible like that. And that's something, uh, even if you don't use TradingView and you're just a regular programmer or software engineer, that's something you can take away and use in your actual code just to make it flexible. Now, moving on, we've set our sources for our different moving average periods. And this does make a change with our logical if statements. And that change is that we have to, instead of manually passing in the close here, we have to make sure to tell it we use the correct source. So when we're setting our MA1 values, we have to tell it when it's doing the moving average calculation that it has to use the MA1 source. Now, if we told it the MA2 or 3, then it wouldn't give us the right, uh, the right calculation. Now, I'm also not sure if I switched over, but on the inputs, you can see there is a description uh, in the code. There's a comment that'll take you to that link that'll show you all about the different input options that you have that are built in. And the, uh, the source is just another one of those built-in options that are already there. Now, we're here talking about the different logic to set our moving averages. In the last video, we discussed the logical if statements and how you can set a variable equal to the if statement and it always spits back the, uh, the last line of code. Now, this is the whole moving average calculation. And originally, when I looked at it, it was two lines of code. And I know I mentioned earlier we were going to look at how multiple lines of code work in here, and I apologize about that. But really, it doesn't matter how many lines of code you have in here, as long as the last line is what you want to set this value to when you set a variable equal to an if statement. Now, I could go in here and I could put zero in here, and it's really not going to do anything. Uh, I mean, I, there's nothing for it to do. You would think... Uh, if you wanted it to return zero, then you would just comment out this line because now that's the last line and it would set MA1 equal to zero. But if I left it in, it would execute this line, but then it would execute this line and only this line would be set to the MA1. It wouldn't even think about zero when it was setting that, that value. We don't need that at all, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it back out. But now you can see the whole moving average is in there. And let me show you the whole moving average follows very closely along with price. And it's one of my favorite indicators. Let's go with the 50 period whole moving average. You can see it doesn't lag behind price very much at all. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite indicators to use. And from what I've read, just a general change in direction of a whole moving average can indicate a small trend change. So when the moving average started trending up, that is when you would have a good signal that the price would probably move up. Now, it all depends on what, uh, what look back periods and other information you use. So this one might not be the best example, but it is an example nonetheless uh, of the whole moving average. Now, if you're curious about the different moving averages, please just Google. There's tons of information on these things, and we're going to add more. If you can think of more that you want to see in here, please let me know in the comments for the video, and we will continue to add more and more. So this is our calculation for the HMA. It's pretty complicated compared to the other ones because it isn't built in. The HMA uses uh, a combination of weighted moving averages, and it's uses a square root as well. So we're doing some more complicated math here, but the point is whatever your last line is, whatever this last line spits out, gets assigned to the variable assigned to the if statement itself. So that really that's all there is. We just got to repeat that 
over and make sure you have your spacing correct on your if statement so that they execute correctly. And that about does it. You know, that's the video. We have all of our different moving averages. We have all of our different sources. And we can continue to add moving averages. Now, there are ways we can improve it. I mean, just looking at this code, it looks a little redundant. Uh, I'm pretty sure in our next video, we are going to be discussing how to consolidate some of this code and improve it even more. Let me take a look at my profile, and if you haven't seen my profile yet, I encourage you to go check it out on TradingView. It's in the description of the video, the URL is, that is. Uh, and you can come here and you can look at all the different scripts I've already created. Now, we're on Scripting Tutorial 4. I've already got six, and I'm working on a seventh already. So make sure you stay tuned to the video series, subscribe on YouTube, and you'll get to see all the videos for all these other things. So in the next video, it looks like we're going to be covering crossovers. And I think this is the video we also reduce the code for the moving averages. We don't have to do new, we don't have to rewrite the same code over and over. We're going to create a function, if you're familiar with development, that we can reuse to calculate the moving averages. So it's going to be really helpful uh, going forward, and we can use the idea of a function in other areas as well. Now, then after that, we're going to move into forecasting, which can also show you where we expect the moving averages to go. So a lot of great things coming up. Please subscribe if you want to see those. Uh, like this video if you like what you've seen so far, but we're moving on ahead, and things are going really great with our scripting series. If there's any sort of indicators or anything that you want to see done specifically, please leave a comment uh, here on YouTube in the comments or on social media in general. The links are all in the description. I usually read all of those uh, for now. So please go on and leave a comment and I will take a look at it. And if it's really good, we'll probably end up doing it. I love doing the things that people suggest. Uh, those are usually the most fun thing to do and it's rewarding for the people I do them for. So uh, looking forward to that. So thank you for watching. Have a great day and I will definitely, well, hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.